Welcome to the podcast. You're a good girl. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's a real pleasure and, a, and an honor, actually, when you look at who you've had on the podcast. Um, I was like, really? Okay, sure. Oh, yeah. You're an, e- yeah, you're an easy yes. You should have been on the podcast a long time ago. Uh, where's Mira right now? Mira is a sitting across from me behind the phone here, uh, taking a nap. <laughs> but she's okay. right with me. Yeah, right. always. She'll come and visit well, later, I'm sure. Okay, yeah. I was hoping we'd like to get a get a, yeah. a shot of Mira and get her get her mm-hmm. some screen time since we're going to be talking about her a lot today. So let's uh, let's start off and have you give us just a brief introduction, an overview of what you're doing, what you're doing with Mira, what this big plan is and this goal is. Uh, just give give us an overview of uh, what you got going on, what your plans are. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm I'm. Uh... A bike packer, a dog packer. So I, I I travel with my dog, which is Mira. She's a border collie uh, healer or uh, Australian cattle dog cross. So high energy, smart dog, always needs a job. And we are riding around the world. We're doing it a little bit differently, maybe than than some people. I mean, that's a that's a fairly common thing. It seems when you start digging through the internet. Yeah, but I'm hoping to go to all seven continents, six of them with Mira. Uh, so we are currently in uh, southern Mexico, just uh, attending to a few things and taking a bit of a break here in Oaxaca. And then we're we'll be at the end of this month, which is uh, January. We're going to be headed uh, through Chiapas, our final state in Mexico, and off to Guatemala and through Central America. And and um, yeah, so it'll it'll go like that for a while, where we're we're uh, you know riding and exploring and m- mainly on dirt and um and and really just in, enjoy the experience of of uh seeing the world uh at our own pace that's great and it's and it's a really wonderful thing doing it with a dog uh you know it, it, the amazing thing is that you know I'll go through say a small village uh or you know on market day or or anything and people will see the dog it'll see mira and they light up they smile and I'm adjacent to that. They sort of they're they're looking just past me. So it's an amazing <laughs> thing to go through the world where everyone is smiling at you and pointing and commenting and asking questions. So that's been something, um, yeah, it's a little unexpected. And I've been riding with a dog now for about uh, eight years. Uh, oh. A dog previous to Mira. I've done a lot of riding in in Spain and uh, many times across the United States, north and south. Uh, into Mexico through Baja and uh, lots through Western Canada. So it's, oh my gosh. Uh, something that's, uh, yeah, if, uh, definitely adapted to uh, both the dogs have and, and, and I have too. So it's, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. That's amazing. I had no idea you had a, had another dog before Mira. So you've really been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And we're going to get into uh, all of your travels and what your plans are. Uh, but by way of getting to know you a little bit more, what what do you do for work? What is your work life like that allows you to even previous to Mira and this this big cycling the world with with Mira? You've been doing this a while, man. How are you able to? Uh, what's your job uh, that allows you to do this kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's a common question. Um, there's kind of th- there's kind of two sides to that. So in the I am trained as a as an alpine guide with the uh, Association of Canadian Mountain Guides in Canada. I'm also um, trained and and have a lot of work time as a rope access technician, rope access supervisor. So if people have seen, you know, on TV or YouTube or in person, someone working on, say, a wind turbine or washing windows, those are the techniques that we use. But I work primarily in oil and gas or other industrial settings from rope. And I do some uh, safety consulting on um, on movies, movie sets if they're shot in the mountains or or high angle terrain, and resource exploration. So that could be uh, different minerals, uh, but again in mountainous terrain. And so I can work uh, contracts chunks of time and then not work. So it appears like I don't work, but I do in these big chunks. And then now it's been kind of this evolution because uh, you know. I'm traveling quite a bit and I'm trying to find a way where I can continue to travel and not stop and then and go back primarily to Canada to work. So there's a greater presence 
online, uh, you know, with Instagram and YouTube primarily and, and uh, making videos, sharing our trips. I mean, we're seeing beautiful places and we're having yeah. interesting interactions and, um, and I have, you know, I have a happy, energetic dog and, and that's entertaining and, and uh, I hope for people. And um, oh, yeah. so they can, they can see our, our YouTube channels. And then along with that in preparation, and I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about it for the, for the tour divide. I started working very closely with um, a Can- another Canadian, um, a veterinary surgeon, a consulting vet. And we are starting a, a new website, uh, which is basically designed to provide inspiration and education for people that own dogs or that have dogs that uh, want to do different adventures. And, and that is called dogpacking.com. So there's kind of a few things that we're trying to, you know, eke out a living. But the real, the real uh, magic is that I live a very simple life, you know, I have very few possessions. They're in storage. I don't have a house. I don't have an apartment. I don't have a car. Uh, You know, I'm in a country, Mexico, where the food costs, accommodation costs are less than in Canada or United States or in Europe. And uh, so I can stretch the dollars that I do earn pretty far. And I try to take care of my bike. And obviously, I take care of my dog and and live a simple life. So (laughs) that's how I'm able to make it work so far. And um, yeah, hopefully I can can continue on doing these these things because I love it. That's great. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's um it's what I hear time and time again from people who want to prioritize traveling whatever in whatever format, seeing the world. Uh you have to make it a priority and figure out ways to juggle different sources of income. Uh you may or may not know I started the podcast primarily as a way to offset my own travel cost. I was traveling all over just the United States at that time. And I was like, man, how can I write off all this as a business expense? I was like, Mm -hmm. I'll just start a podcast. I'll go into wherever I'll interview someone there. And then the whole thing was a podcasting trip, you know? And so uh, I get it, you know, I'm trying to juggle and figure out ways to make the thing that you really want to do a a real feasible and attainable thing. And it usually takes a lot of juggling. It's not a, uh, most people don't have a job that'll just allow them to go and do this kind of stuff. So it, takes a lot of juggling in the background. But sorry to cut you off there, but, but oh, enough people are doing it like yourself. It's a good example. We can kind of learn from these things. And, and um, I think there's there's an opening for people to, to live a, a slightly different life than maybe yeah. we uh, well, thought when we were young. It's such, it's such an important thing that I like to try to promulgate. And it's why I asked a lot of people, like, what do you do for a living that allows you to do this? Because it's not, it is getting to know you, but it's also like helping people understand what it takes and also giving them inspiration to be like, oh yeah, you can do this too, but it takes a lot of sacrifice to to do it. You know, you got to live a really simple life and got to have to probably have a threshold for inconsistent income and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But if it's worth it to you, you can have this kind of life. And I agree, it's not the go to school and get a degree and buy a house and 2.5 kids and, you know, just the typical, at least in America, the typical life plan that you're kind of presented with all through school. And and it's, it's, it's uh, reflected in the conversations with your parents and at school and with your friends and where are you going to college and when are you getting married and all this kind of stuff. And so it's it's important that it's not just like, oh, look at John and Mira going doing this, but like also a, a little peek behind how you make it actually work, you know? So I was going to ask you what came first, Mira or bikepacking? What, what was your first dog's name? Uh, Melon. Melon? Uh, he was a border collie. Yeah. Melon collie. Melon collie. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> So when and, did you and, first get, were you first a dog owner that got into bikepacking or were you a bike packer that became a dog owner or like, where was the confluence that did this confluence of dog packing uh, meet? Yeah. I mean, it goes back a long time. I mean, I've, I've had dogs in the family and myself since I was a young kid and there was definitely a, a, a long period where I didn't have one. You know, I just couldn't afford the cost and I wasn't racing bicycles actually. So there was no time for, for that. Probably the bikes came first. Uh, I'm old enough to, to remember when mountain bikes became first commercially available. And I borrowed one from a local shop and took it out for a ride. And what we call bikepacking now, I thought that's what they were for. 
initially. Like I, I, that, that just made sense to me. And, and then I quickly learned, well, no, no, no you're supposed to race these things. Uh, so, so that, so that took over a, a time for, you know, took over my life for, for quite a while. Um, but then when I wanted to go, you know, bike touring, uh, I just didn't want to leave my dog behind. And uh, I did a, a, some Google searching like we do to try and figure out, you know, how this is done. And for off-road riding, you know, typically the bikepacking style, mainly dirt, there, there weren't really any examples of, of how to do that. And so, yeah, I just figured it out, um, did a couple of trials and, and uh, sort of settled on a single wheel trailer. And uh, packed it all up and learned how to get my dog to Europe. Um, and and we uh, yeah we made a flight to Spain and we spent uh, six months there riding around and um, learning how to to do what we call dog packing now. Yeah, I love it. So let's talk a little bit more about Mira. Give us an introduction to Mira. You already told us that she's a a border collie mix. Is that right? A border collie. Yeah, healer. that's right. Border collar. Border collar healer. Uh, were, were, when you were thinking about getting another dog, were you thinking about a specific breed that you uh, believe would work well as a dog packing dog? I have to imagine at this point, you're like kind of committed to this lifestyle. So you're thinking, okay, I need a dog that can be up to the physical task of what I'm going to be able to, what I'm wanting to do. Uh, what was your thought process there? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of all those things and, and some other things too. I mean, I think any, any dog can work, um, to go to do this kind of thing. Uh, you just have, you have to be willing to adapt to the dog. The dog's going to set the, the tone of how far they can run and, and how much they weigh. And, and so how that affects, I had actually, um, tragically lost my my previous dog uh hit by a car and i was thinking well maybe i don't want to have a, a dog in my life for a while because that's going to be simpler travel uh, on you know honestly it's it's the logistics of going through an airport or um just day to day you know it's it adds to it it adds the, the weight and all those kind of things but i've always had border collie or border collie cross type dogs you know they're super active they're intelligent they're pretty loyal they're you know they're uh curious so they're a lot of fun and so it just made sense i came across a um i wasn't sure if i would get a border collie or a or a healer this time this time and and i uh, came across i saw an ad online and i thought oh i'll just go out and take a look at the you know to this ranch and take take a look to see what they have and of course that's never gonna you know and in your arms a, a puppy uh, yeah in your and, arms uh, and so she was i she was three months old, which is the, the youngest that you can fly, uh, at least into Europe with, uh, because of the vaccination requirements. Okay. And so as a puppy, we, we went back to Europe and, um, and, she, and, it, and that was really hard actually, because she didn't, she didn't know all the commands of a, of an older dog. And she just got heavier and heavier and heavier <laughs> as a puppy. And then she couldn't really run, uh, very, you know, very far, very fast. That's a good way to, to injure your dog if you start to, you know, push them too hard, too, too early. And so, um, yeah, we've just kind of uh, created this life together, you know, where I, I don't think of traveling without her. I rarely go anywhere without her. And, um, and yeah, so it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been great. Yeah. How old is she now? She's six years old. So she's, oh my yeah, God. her entire life she's been, she's been doing this. Yeah. Yeah. This is mind blowing. So, you know, one of my questions was like, I had to assume that there was a lot of training and practice rides and all this before you um, decided to, you know, kind of really take on a big trip. But instead you took a puppy and taught her from the very beginning, like, Hey, this, this is your life. It seems yeah. like so. My question: How well did she take to that? I assume adapted pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I think really well. I mean, it's also for the for the for the human in the equation to be able to adapt as well. I mean, um, you know, the, to know if she's going to be okay inside of a tent, or she's going to jump outside of the basket or the trailer, or how she yeah. reacts to other dogs or other people, and like with anyone that that has had dogs in their life just really clear 
and consistent boundaries for the dog really help them. And so, yeah, it really did work out pretty well. Uh, I do remember being frustrated, you know, with, you know, because she's a puppy, like they take a lot, <laughs> they need a lot of energy, uh, yeah. you know, directed towards them and, and attention. And they're, they're not like the dog you had previously that knew everything. So that, that was tough, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was great. And it's, um, and it's been good ever since. And it just gets better and better and better. And and she, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm forcing her to do it. She loves it. If I move the bicycle and she hears a freewheel move or I put on my shoes or anything like that, she comes running. She's excited to go. She gets to run. She gets to jump in and out of the basket, you know, explore the world. It's like, ha- and then when we're on the bicycle, it's like her having her head out the car window all day long. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's pretty awesome from a, from a dog standpoint. It's hard to get much yeah. better. I think yeah, so, anyone yeah, sure. who has spent any time watching uh, your YouTube channel or follows you on Instagram, but really like your YouTube channel is great. Um, you really get a sense for how well Mira is enjoying the trip, but also like your love for that dog is unparalleled. Like y- you, you genuinely love that dog and, and take such excellent, excellent care of her. And it's, it's really a, it's a beautiful relationship. I really, I really enjoy uh, watching y'all out there on your adventures together. I'm, I'm wondering though, like, as we're talking about, you know, training a dog to um, be a dog packing dog, like some of the concerns that enter my mind are, you know, what if she jumps out and wants to chase wildlife and she, if she's leashed up, she might pull you off your bike or um, maybe run into the woods and you lose her. Or I, I had a dog, I actually had a uh, Australian shepherd. I, she went with my ex-wife in a divorce, but um, I tried to take that dog just trail riding. You know, I was trying to teach it to be a trail dog and uh, it would always bite my tires. And one time, like, bit my tire and caused it to go flat and i'm like okay well that you know that was and you know they're herding dogs so it makes sense to try to herd the bike the whole time so are there any were there any like issues with that or did mary just kind of uh figure it out pretty quickly yeah, yeah i mean i've been pretty lucky to be honest but um i mean that being said her safety is my priority and, and i'm and i'm it's kind of you to say that you like the the relationship between myself and mira comes across in the videos I, I, it's genuine so I'm, I'm glad that it comes comes across that way but yeah the safety is a, a, a big thing I mean uh, you know being able to make sure I don't run her too hard and, and injure her um, she's exposed to different things say exam- you know here in Mexico you know fleas ticks other internal parasites and then um, yeah the basket actually sits about a meter off the ground so about three feet and she's in and out of the basket a tremendous number of times that, you know, especially, you know, if the terrain is up and down, she weighs 40 pounds. So if I can unload 40 pounds from the bicycle on a steep hill, I'm, I'm going to do it. And so, yeah, I've learned some techniques over time to, and sort of, you know, try to think of them in advance before I, before she gets injured. And so she wears a harness, just a, a regular dog harness um, that connects the connection point is uh, sort of mid, mid back. And so I give her a little tug when she goes to jump up into the basket. And I also ease off the landing impact when she, when she jumps out of the basket. But she is really well controlled in terms of commands. You know, I can reach back on the leash and she'll know it's time to jump out, but I can have her wait. Or if we're on single track trail, I can give her the command behind and she'll stay behind the bicycle so that I can have the interactions with, you know, maybe people on the trail or other animals or livestock, that kind of thing. So it's, yeah. And then, you know, here there's lots of unleashed dogs that, that make a lot of racket and bark and, and some of them are aggressive. Um, you know, that happens everywhere in the world. And and so just being able to manage those kind of things are, are super important. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's those kind of questions. That's why we've, we've started dogpacking.com. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the main thing. And, and, and so if, if there's, you know, if I think something's going to cause injury to her or there's some kind of situation, I'll do my best to avoid it or control it or somehow mitigate, you know, those situations because uh, this doesn't work if I, in, if I allow my dog to be injured. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah, I mean, that not only injures your dog, but it 
creates uh, a situation for you where you might be in the middle of nowhere and you need to care for your dog. And that's, I mean, that becomes an emergency situation pretty quickly. So uh, it, I think it's better for all parties. And it's also uh, important for me too. like, I'll make sure that I control my speed or just be a bit more cautious sometimes because I, I don't want to get injured because she's relying on me um, as well. If I end up, you know, in the hospital mm -hmm. or needing care from other people, you know, what happens to her. So it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 if you think about it too much, it'll, it'll hurt your head. It's, it's a little stressful. Yeah. My, uh, my relationship with this kind of concept is, you know, taking my kids bike packing. And whenever you said like, you're kind of living adjacent to like all the attention being on them. And I have a tandem bike where I, and then I have a trailer bike that attaches on the back. And so all three of us are like in a train going, even if we just ride around the block or, you know, if we go on a trip, all eyeballs are on you, you know, people are pointing and looking and, but like taking kids in the outdoors comes with a lot of risk and you have to maintain them and yourself. And so that's kind of the way I, I've never taken a dog, uh, dog packing before, before but, but um, I can kind, I can of, kind relate of relate to it. To I, think, it. I think kids and kids dogs, dogs there's obviously, obviously like a lot of, a lot of similarities. Uh, there's some differences. But you're right. And I think there's different levels you can go at, but the benefits of it far outweigh the risks normally, right? I mean, they're learning about the world and they're interacting with things and they're being stimulated and, and um, you can just see the joy and the memories that you create. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's really worthwhile. And, and with a bit of forethought, you can manage the risks, you know, where you go you and go, when you and, go and, and uh, the equipment you, you bring and the pace that you go at. Um, yeah, you just need to be sensible about these things. I can imagine. I mean, there are so many people who are just, fanatics for for dogs dog lovers specifically probably their dogs you know some people all dogs you, i saw the bumper sticker yesterday tell your dog i said hi i mean you know people love their dogs and i can imagine uh you as inspiration you're the only person i know that really does this i don't i don't know if there's a a, a, a small community i'm not aware of but i can imagine you have a lot of people who are hey how do i how do i do it and as we're talking, it's very obvious, like there are a lot of logistical things and practical things that you have to consider to be successful. And so I wanted to take a little time and, uh, and, and go through some of the things maybe that you've done and you've learned to uh, make this successful and be able to take on a big challenge like a world tour. And I think a good place to start with that is, is with your bike. Yeah, if you like and subscribe, that's more support for this little girl. Those artisanal organic throwing sticks don't come easy. It takes a lot of miles to find those. <laughs>